Namaste friends. Welcome to Bono Biology Center for True Learning. In this video, we talk about vegetative propagation or vegetative reproduction in plants. What is vegetative propagation? The process in which new plants are produced from the vegetative parts of the parent plant is known as vegetative propagation. Here, some of the plant parts like stem, leaves or roots helps in creation of new plants. This process is called vegetative propagation. The other name is for vegetative propagation is vegetative reproduction. The stem or roots or leaf. These are the plant parts helps in the propagation vegetatively. These parts are called vegetative propagules. The vegetative parts participate in reproduction are called vegetative propagules. Here yeah. some pictures are presented. The first picture jasmine. The second one is turmeric. The third picture ginger the fourth picture gava so in these plants uh, uh, new plants can be raised vegetatively through the vegetative propagation next our uh, talk is about methods of vegetative propagation in how many ways plants can be propagated vegetatively there are two types of vegetative propagation the one is natural methods of vegetative propagation second one is artificial methods of Vegetative propagation. Generally, the natural methods of vegetative propagation happens in the nature naturally, but artificial methods of vegetative propagation are created by man artificially. The first one is natural methods of vegetative propagation. What is it? The vegetative propagation takes place in the nature naturally by the plants. Following plant parts participate in this state of propagative method one is roots second is stem third is leaves first so we take a root part for our discussion here roots may be tap roots or root tubers some plants develop adventitious buds on the ordinary roots which grow to form new plants the best examples are gava dalmargia siso another example is cactus here adventitious Birds form on the ordinary roots of the plant from adventitious birds, so new plants can be arised naturally. In some plants, in other plants, root tubers or tuberous roots can be propagated vegetatively when planted in soil. Best examples are sweet potato, dahlia, asparagus, and yam. The first picture is about yam. The second picture represents uh, sweet potato. The third picture represents asparagus. The fourth one is dahlia. So in this picture, the vegetative propagation uh, is very clear. So this part is old root tuber. So these three are new root tubers developed from the tuberous roots. The another uh, part of the plant is stem. Stem also helps in vegetative propagation. For our better understanding and convenience, so we categorize the stem into three groups. One is underground stems, second is creeping stems, third one is aerial stems. The first one is underground stems. These are the stems uh, grown inside the soil. In some plants, underground stems helps in propagation. So they are uh, called with different names like sucker, rhizome, combs, bulbs, and tubers. So what is sucker? Arise from the base of the erect shoot, grow horizontally in the soil, and become out to form new aerial shoots. These shoots become independent when sucker breaks. The best examples are mint. The second one is chrysanthemum. This long portion in, in, the, in both the diagrams, this long portion is called sucker. So this part uh, up to certain length uh, grows inside the soil and at certain point it comes out and form the shoots. Here the adventurous roots are formed. In case of breaking of this sucker, so this newly formed shoot is capable of giving rise to new plant. The another one is rhizome, modified plant stem that sends out roots and shoots from its node it's called rhizome. Rhizome arises from axillary buds and grow horizontally. So you can see this type of vegetative propagation in ginger, 
banana, turmeric, lotus, and water. Hi. So you should take small piece of ginger or turmeric and plant it in the soil. After few days, you can observe the rising of new plant from that planted small piece of the parent plant. The third one is bulbs. A short stem with fleshy leaves or leaf scales or bases called a bulb. The examples are onion, garlic, lilies. So this is the onion. So this picture represents the so internal structure of the onion. There are so many fleshy layers forms the complete onion. Here the formation of lateral buds is seen. So in the fourth diagram, the formation of daughter buds uh, laterally. So each uh, daughter buds is capable of uh, giving rise to new onion. The second picture represents the garlic. The third picture represents the lilies. In this, in these three cases, uh, the stem helps in vegetative propagation. The fourth one is stem tubers. Modified stems used as storage organs for nutrients helps in propagation called tubers. The best example is potato. So this is the potato has many eyes on its uh, surface. Here each eye of the potato tuber is a bud which grows into a new potato plant when planted in the soil. The eyes on the potatoes are called uh, buds. So when you take the small piece of the potato with eyes and planted in the soil, after a few days, it can become a so new potato plant. So this is the germination of a shoot plant, the complete plant of flowering. Here the so many the potatoes are formed. The another category of stems is creeping stems. In some plants, creeping stems helps in vegetative propagation. Actually, creeping stems are uh, weaken stems they cannot uh, grow upward straightly creeping stems are uh, maybe runners stolons or offsets first one is runners a runner is the stem portion of the plant that tends to grow horizontally as opposed to upright like main stem here this lengthy part is called runners this runner has so many nodes. At each node, we can see the formation of uh, adventitious roots. Here, each node gives rise to aerial shoot, ultimately, so which grows into a, a new plant. The best examples are oxalis, second one is cyanodon, third one is centella, and another example is strawberry. The another creeping stem is stolons, a creeping horizontal plant stem that curves towards the ground reaching the soil forms the roots stem and ultimately become a new plant so in this picture you can clearly see that so this is the stem branch first curves towards the move towards the ground reaches the soil and forms the roots and forms the shoots and finally become a new plant. Unfortunately, if stolen breaks, so this uh, part, uh, this portion is capable of develop into new plant. The best examples are jasmine and valisneria. The fourth type of creeping stem is offsets. So we can observe it in case of aquatic plants. A short lateral shoots bearing clustered leaves at the tips capable of producing new plants when separated from the parent plant. The examples are Pistia and Icarnia. So in these two pictures, so there is a so long slender part which is called a offset. Here there are nodes and a cluster of leaves formed at the top tips and at the base roots are formed. When this offset breaks accidentally, or unfortunately, the remaining portion is capable of uh, giving rise to new Pistia plant or Icaria plant. So this is about creeping plant. The third category of stems is aerial stems. These stems are strong stems uh, and able to grow upright. 
in some plants aerial modified plants helps in propagation so we can see this type of propagation in coctus and opuntia this is the coctus plant this is the opuntia plant so it has so many stem different stem segments when stem segments uh, fall on the soil so they will uh, uh, begin to develop into new coctus plant or opuntia plant next the another important part of the plants participate in the vegetative reproduction is leaves or leaf in some plants adventitious buds develop on their leaves the best example is bryophyllum begonia and streptocarpus on the edges of the bryophyllum leaf the so many buds are formed when these buds fall on the soil and reaches the soil so by taking the help of the soil so they will give rise to new bryophyllum plants the another method of vegetative propagation is artificial methods of vegetative propagation here propagation is not done naturally so it is man made many vegetative propagation methods today we are using are man made they are used to produce plants or crops for commercial use on large scale the important artificial methods of vegetative propagation are cutting layering and grafting first one is cutting the small pieces of plant parts such as stem or root or leaf are used for propagation take a plant and get either stem or root or leaves separately for propagation bryophyllum begonia and glucinia are examples for leaf cutting here taking the leaf or using the leaf is enough to produce uh, new plants take small portion of bryophyllum leaf plant in the soil and wait for getting the new plant in case of tamarind and citron roots are used for the propagation in case of grapes sugarcane rose duranda the stems small pieces or stems uh, so used for the propagating of new plants so here this picture uh, depicts the stem pieces of sugarcane take one piece of sugarcane plant in the soil and you can observe the formation of uh, adventitious roots from the nodes and ultimately grown into the complete sugarcane plant the another artificial method is layering propagation of new plants by inducing roots on stem branches before they are detached from the parent plant is called layering so we can uh, of course we could practice this type of uh, propagative method at our homes in case of jasmine the best examples are jasmine raspberry grapevine and cherry in this picture so what you are able to observe here the stem branch is uh, artificially forcibly or induced to get into the soil later on here the adventitious buds are formed and completely it develops into new plant the third method of artificial vegetative propagation is grafting for implementing this method two plants are required upper part of one plant grows on the root system of another plant the upper part is called scion the lower root part is called stalk first of all so we need to make uh, cuttings or remove the so required amount of uh, tissue from both the plant parts and uh, make the both plant parts fitted and uh, get them attached uh, tightly with the help of uh, thread or any other material so after some times the tissues of both cyan and stalk uh, uh, mingle and uh, get together and develops into a single plant so this is the method mainly used for getting the desired qualities or characters in a plants thank you for watching this video